Hello there guys, my name is Matt, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Jig Tech uh, quick fit handle with the installation kit and I've got my Jig Tech handle here, it's exactly the same one that I've got on this uh, door here, it's kind of like a Victorian style chrome, uh, they feel very good quality, um, they have a lot of weight to them so they're not like lightweight and they feel nice in the hand so this is a rose handle so it's just on that singular rose. Um, but I'm just going to get straight into it. Uh, first of all, you've got to take out of your kit the main device, which is the jig, which fits on the door. And I've already put this on the door, just to make it quicker so that I can show you exactly right now. But I've got a standard Donington door that you can get from Howden's or Wix. And I found that the nicest place to put them on this particular door is to make it so that the rows, the actual circular thing on the handle, is exactly in line with the bottom of the top panel for it's because it's a four panel door. So when the when the handle's finished, it's in line with this thing here. Because if you put it here, it's a bit too low down. If you put it like above here, it looks a bit weird because it's not in line with anything. But if you put it so it's in line with the bottom line here, then it will look nice when it's when it's all fitted. The way to do that is to get yourself your measuring tape. So I've got one here and then measure up to the, from the base of the door, click your, grip your uh, tape measure onto the base of the door and measure up to the, the end, the bottom of the first panel. So you can see here, the bottom of the first panel is 960 um, up from the base of the door. And the actual rose itself, if I take it out of the pack, the rose itself, this, uh, the diameter of this thing is 52. So if you divide 52 by two, that gives you 26. And so that means your cent the center of your hole here needs to be 26 mil above this um, lower, lower line here. So you measure up 960 and then add an extra 26 on, that gives you 986. So make a little dot. So you basically wanna put this in the around about the right position you want and then make a little dot at 960 in that hole and then move this up to a position where that dot is in the center and that will give you around about the right place that you want to um, drill through. First thing that you're going to be drilling is this arbor, a hole saw with an arbor and then you want to make sure this tip pokes through but this saw doesn't poke through because when that does it will push through and rip the whole of the mdf edging on this door um i've never done it myself but i've seen it happen on um like if you've got melamine board and you've drilled through all the way it just bursts out the other side and, and just fucks the whole thing up so like i said just poke this tip through but not the not the whole saw and i'll uh, show you how to do that now so i've just put that whole saw on now and it is a 44 millimeter hole saw with a, looks like about a eight millimeter drill bit on the end, uh, which is extruding further out of the tip. And I've got this Dewalt drill that I've got, I've used for ages. Uh, it's lasted me a very, very long time. Uh, if you want to get this drill, it is called the DCD776. I think I got it from Screwfix, but I've got a link in the description for all the products that you can see in this video. Um, including the installation kit and the handles themselves. So if you do want to go for and you think they look good on the Donington doors, then do click on the link in the description. And um, I think you'll have a nice job when it's finished. But I'll just show you now what it looks like and how to, how to drill through. So make sure you get the drill nice and central in through the jig, even though the jig is supposed to be guiding you, you, you do get a little bit of play up and down. I'll just show you that so you can see it properly. So you can see here, you can put this in and you can still you can still move it around very slightly. So make sure you've got it nice and centrally to get into that position that you were originally um, marked out. And then just start drilling through as perpendicular as possible to the door. And I'll just show you that so you can see it. So I'll get the door, get it in line with the camera. Got my knee on the bottom here, just below stopping the door from moving. Just positioning that drill 
in the center of that jig. Slowly start to drill through. Now the tip of the drill is in and I can just finish going through the drill bit. Keeping the drill nice and perpendicular, you can see here it's nice and perpendicular both this way, up and down, and also left and right. So you want to make sure that it comes out the other side as perpendicular as possible to the door. Now the whole saw is in there. And I can start going at it a bit harder. Just keeping an eye on the other side so that when it pokes through, I'll stop as soon as possible. And there you go, you can see it poke through the other side there. So you, can, you really want to stop as soon as you can um, to avoid puncturing through with the rest of the hole saw. So that's just the tip of the drill bit showing. And now what I'm going to do is basically take the hole saw out like that, go to the other side, use the exact same position there and start drilling the other way. So there's your bit of door and the next thing is to get the 25mm hole saw that's in the pack, switch over the arbor and hole saw. And then you've got another hole here which is basically where the latch will go. You can see there, and you want to position it nice and centrally. This is a lot tighter fit, so there's not as much play to move around, so you don't really need to um, worry too much about the positioning of it originally. But once you've got it in, just make sure you do it nice and perpendicular to the door, um, as I mentioned before. Nicely cut, a couple of holes that are perpendicular to the face of the door, the back of the door, and this edge of the door. Now moving on to the next step, you want to get the latch and basically push that in the way that it's going to be closing on the door. Once you've cut the, um, the hole out itself, sometimes you get a bit of, of this leftover wood stuck inside the hole saw so the best way to get it out is get your um, other tool that's in there this is another hole saw but it's just a flat um, hole saw and you can basically push through this hole to get that little piece of wood out and that will wiggle straight out there you go that's ready to be reused again then get your trusty henry the hoover and look at his smile there, he's pretty cute, isn't he? And then um, just hoover out all of the dust that's inside the, the holes and all over the floor. And then we can move on to the next job, basically marking out the position of the um, the latches. I'm actually replacing a door, so I have originally have these, um, a thumb turn lock, uh, mortise lock, and also a latch that I had before. But I'm gonna be replacing that with a chrome one that came with the kit, the handle kit. Um, so, yeah, hoover that out and uh, on to the next job. So then you want to separate the handles in the kit and take this green uh, jig tech thing out and just stick it in the middle of the door like that so the writing is facing up. Basically the latch will then slot into that and the handles will grip onto either side. So take the latch that also comes in the kit and put it in so that the latch will be pushed in as the door closes. 
get it nice and upright. And then as you push it in, it will slot in through the green shaped thing. So just push it all the way in. It slots in quite nicely because the hole saw that we're given is uh, just the right size for it. So that's slotted in nice into the center of the hole that we've got. And then you can put the handles um, straight in on both sides between them. So that's now fit in and the handle will be in its final position. I think that looks pretty good. You'll then get an Allen key with the set and you can undo the underside here. You can see there is a, a little Allen key just there on the bottom, just there. And we need to undo that because uh, we need to put some bolts through that hold the handle together. You then get these two bolts that come with the handle set and you can then thread them in through the holes at the top and the bottom. And basically what that does is it grips the handle onto the door and stops it from moving when you open and close the handle. But you can, you can tighten that with a screwdriver. Don't do it up too tight, just enough to bite on the door. Once that's done, take the rose casing and put that back over the handle. Making sure the Allen key bolt is at the bottom because that's where it screws in. And there's also an Allen key here under the handle itself, which needs to be tightened because that grips onto the, um, the spindle that's in there that's hold, that's, that goes between both the doors. So that just holds that in position, holds everything together nicely. So just tighten that up as well. And that'll grip down onto the spindle. It goes through the door. And on the other side, you can do the same. Just make sure it's tight. So then you just need to close your door, mark out the positions of the latch, where it sits. You can see I've done that already. For those two lines, open the door up. It would have been a lot easier for me if I didn't already have a latch plate that I'd installed previously because now I need to fill this with wood filler and then mark out the position of this new latch plate, which is slightly lower down. Uh, if I was doing a fresh install, I would go for the circular latch plate that comes with it because all you need to do is measure the thickness of your door, which on this one is 35 millimeters. So half of that would be 17.5. So I know that I would need to drill a hole in the center of these two lines and 17.5 millimeters in from the edge, as long as the door was completely flush with this edge when you closed it. And then once you've drilled that, you, so you'd basically get this hole saw which comes with your kit. So you'd mark out that position and then drill this hole up to the, you see there's a little dot there in the middle. That is the depth that you need to drill to. And then you would get this plastic little holder thing in the, in the set, which um, just basically covers up all the wood once you've finished. Um, you, you slot that into the hole and screw it in with these screws and then just put that latch plate over the front and that's it, it's finished. And you literally close the door and it's done after you screw that in. Um, but with now, now I'm just gonna have to chisel out or use the multi-tool and get rid of all that excess um, wood around there. We're going to have to fill this in and um, uh, basically screw that in there uh, and then it should be um, all done. But it's a little bit more complicated if you're not doing a fresh install. But I'll just um, fill this in with wood filler now and um, remark out the position of this and um, get it cut back out in the right position again. And then after I've done that, I'm going to paint all this up so you won't see any of the wood filler when it's done. Um, that will be in a different video. So it's a new day now and I've filled in the hole 
that was here before with uh, car body filler, which is actually just polyester filler because uh, it's much stronger than normal wood filler and dries much faster. And I've also, you can see, marked out the position of the latch plate itself uh, and drawn a line around it and marked out the holes for drilling the screw holes through. Uh, and you can see here there are several lines. Uh, and the middle one here is actually the line of where the latch finishes. So when you close the door, the latch goes in to there. And what I've done is I've just looked through this hole with the light on and um, discovered where the the line is that meets up with where that latch finishes. And um, because that tells me exactly where to put the latch plate on when I'm drawing the line. So the middle one is where the latch should finish. So I've fixed it, I've drawn a line around it according to that middle line being where the latch finishes. So that line is drawn around it like that. So now I'm going to have a go at cutting that out. So you can see I've started by cutting straight lines and lines across and then you can basically chip it away at it sideways um, to cut out your one millimetre depth or so. So I've now cut that depth away. I've got about a one millimetre depth all the way around this edge and the latch plate goes in there like that. Um, and now I've marked out, you can see the top and the bottom here, the Byron mark, just to cut away the lip on this edge so that this plate can overhang the edge without any interference when it's placed this way. And then I've marked out the central hole. You can see here, there's a central hole here because this little bit needs to go into a hole and then we have a little cover that comes with your handle pack. You can see here, that just covers up all the mess that's in the, the bottom of it. Basically I've placed this centrally over where the hole on the latch plate is and um, drawn around it. You can see that outer line there. So I've drawn around that. And um, it doesn't actually matter particularly what size this is, as long as it's in around about the right position, because the, the white thing is gonna cover, cover up the hole eventually anyway, so it's gonna be nice and neat. First I'm gonna drill, use a drill bit, go into each corner, and then use the multi tool to join all of those holes um, afterwards, and just gouge out the middle. So you can see there what I've done. I've just drilled in at each corner. So now I've gouged out that hole and I'll admit it doesn't look like the prettiest of things, but once you've put the white plate in, the white backing plate, that fills the hole up and that's fit nice and centrally in there. Um, and is within that depth that we've sliced out. And also, you can put the front plate on now. And that covers up all that mess. Um, but we have these little counter sinks here and they protrude through to the other side. So in order to get that to sit flush up against the wall, um, and stop it from pulling away there, you can see what I've done is just literally turned it around again and got it in the position where I want it and then put those dots in and um, I'm just going to use this 8mm drill bit and just drill in very slightly into there just to allow the face plate to sit up against the, the wood nicely so I'm going to do that now Cut those holes out now uh, and 
I'll admit it does look a little bit messy, but the face plate, the backing plate is gonna cover it up. And um, so the plate fits in and it is below the wood. Once it's screwed in, it will be nice below the wood. And um, I'm gonna fill this in because it's a bit messy, neaten it up. Um, but all I'm gonna do now is just screw through there with the screws that come with the kit and um, close the door and check it. So that's all installed now. I will be neatening this up later and also painting all of the linings. Um, so I just wanted to get it fitted in properly and that closes really nicely. There's no play in the door. I can't move it backwards and forwards. And it clicks in every time. So here I've got the finished result. I've got the jig tech handle on there and I've also added a privacy lock. Both of these are from Howland's Kitchens. Um, a chrome privacy lock for underneath. And um, the latch plate is now installed with the door linings painted. I'll be doing a video on how to paint a door afterwards because I'm going to be painting the doors in exactly the same colour as I did the door lining. And that will show you the process of how to prime the wood, how to get it flat and how to then um, put the final layer on. So this is a two layers of um, acrylic primer. It's called Leyland Primic Acrylic Primer White. And then after that, you've got the Dulux Once um, satin wood coat, which gives it a nice sheen on it. It's a very hard wearing finish. But you can see here, it looks very nice up against a chrome uh, latch plate. I've, I actually left this little bit in here and I didn't fill it because I didn't want to spend any more time on the door, but it's not very noticeable from a distance. And I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So um, if you want to see this door get painted the exact same color as the uh, the door linings, door linings and architrave, then I'll be putting a, a video up uh, in about a week's time. And if you want to subscribe, you'll get a notification when that comes up and you'll see how the, the wood on the outside here is, is, is primed and then the final coat put on and then how you dry it um, and how the process of just how to paint a door with the roller and, and the paintbrush. It's pretty easy, but if you get every single detail right, you get the best finish possible. So please do like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.